Okay, so I'm getting ready today to uh, put together this board, and I decided, you know what? Um, I've got a few things I'm doing differently on it. One of the things I'm going to do, I think, is map it through 50 foot-pounds and 100 foot-pounds and 150 foot-pounds. Um, I was just getting ready to put it together because I'm building this... Uh, Weird. Some days. Anyway, I'm building this Borden in this series. Um, and I just figured I'm going to document step by step by step. I'm just going to document the way I set up my barrel vise, the way I tighten, and how I set my poundage. I'm not going to do it exactly the same, but what I've done is I've set up my wrench, I've set up a gauge system, and I'm using a bow scale to set my uh, 150 foot-pounds of torque. And I think on camera, if I can fit it all in there, I'm going to try to put a bunch of indexing marks on there and I'm going to tighten to 50 foot-pounds, index, 75 or 100, clear to 150, and show you how a uh, 2 inch 350 shoulders come together and just how much they advance. They advance a ton. Let's just start with that. So, we're going to come around here. I'm going to see if I can do this. There's, um, I just... This unrehearsed stuff is what it is. So, going down, we have here a barrel flopping in the vise. We've got this just gently screwed together. It's uh, just so that you know, this is one of the ones that I've got. I'm going to turn this on manual focus. Hopefully, I remember everything here. This is one of those scenarios where I've taken a recoil lug. What looks like a recoil lug. This is the top of this marked barrel. This is where I expect to advance to at 100 foot-pounds, which is... This is a 6 PPC, so I may well stop there. Um, this is going to be a, an experiment. I may go past, I may... Don't know yet exactly what I'm going to do, because... But, anyway... This right here, let's open this up so that you can see what I've done. This is not a recoil lug. This is in fact very tightly fitted. And then turned off and I've set it so that it's on the bottom. So that it looks like a recoil lug, but it's actually a shouldering abutment. It's actually just for this action to tighten up against. I've milled a slot in the bottom of this, so I'm not going to, I'm going to be using that for the recoil lug. So, let's put this thing in, without further ado, and let's have the at this. Now, I'm going to try to show you the moves. As I actually bollocks up this big old action wrench. For starters, I should have backed this thing way off. You know what? I'm going to go over here. We might end up with a throwaway because I don't even know what perspectives we're going to get here. But there we've got some perspective. Got something going here. Hopefully we can get a focus happening. I kind of want to show you everything here because every step is important in my mind. We start by taking, this is the base of the wrench, and this is what brings it to inch 350. Okay, we all with us here? What I've done prior is I have this joint right here carefully lubed up inside. I've wiped the outside and I have it now squeaky clean. I've wiped this out and it's now squeaky clean. Now I take my little, what I've done is take an athletic rosin bag and just cut it open and spilled the rosin all around. Now I just wipe a little of this in here. It's messy but it's rosin. I mean, how messy can rosin be? It just is what it is. So, I slobber in both sides. Now, I've tried leather, I've tried cardboard, I've tried cardstock, I've tried everything under the sun. And right now, I've got a melanided action here. I haven't scarred one yet. Um, 
And in this particular case, because I'm setting it up for the camera, I'm not using the screws or anything to align this. I'm just putting it on. Now, this is weird. This right here is medical grade lanolin butter. I don't know if you can read that. Anyway, trust me, it is. I put that, these screws I just noticed were getting a little bit not as the way I'd like them. I put a little of that lanolin butter on there. I know nothing about screws. I'm not rating anything as I keep trying to say. My opinions in this case are fully unsupported, but I like the way this lanolin butter works. It's, how should I say, sticky but not sticky? Um, it's hand lotion. Sticky grade of hand lotion. Totally innocuous as far as I know. Doesn't, you know, there's no fear of there ever being any kind of a decide if I should put this on top or side or what. I'm going to go... Man, this is going to block for you guys, but I don't know what else to do. You'll be able to see the handle moving, so you won't be able to see my marks on the barrel, but you will be able to see the handle indexing through the clock as I tighten. There's no really good way for me to get a perspective so, I tighten this down carefully and fairly tightly. I'm putting, I'm putting a pretty good grunt on this. So, there's no screws through this, there's nothing. That is just a slip fit around the action. I'm going to bring this up to where I think it's going to index out so that I can take a, a nice reading on my gidget when I get there. So, came unprepared here. As I said, may or may not work out. I try to go fast. Okay. So the things I wanted to show you were my use of rosin and how I do it. It shouldn't slip because we've got rosin. My use of lanolin butter as a lubricant is clean, it's non-toxic, it's not black, it's not corrody. It, um, it's a medical grade, and people use it on, I don't know what you use it for in the hospital, what you'd use medical grade lanolin for, nursing babies. Uh, I just don't, don't know. But it's a fine emollient cream. Now, I could go crazy on that, but I don't think I have to. So, we start, this is measured, hang on a second, I've got this backwards, I most certainly do. This is measured in increments of one foot, two foot, and three foot is up there. So, we're going to start by torquing this thing at one foot, I bring it up to where it's just, let's say, hand tight. And now, to show you how I set this, actually I might not be able to go through the whole, all the way up to 150 foot-pounds here, but I'm going to make some marks here on my action, show you how many, as I said, you won't be able to see the degrees that it goes through, but this is a bow scale. Here I am at one foot away, and remember, we're dealing with what we're going for here right now is 50 foot pounds. This scale will easily pull 50 pounds. It pulls a lot more than that actually, but it's easy to read as I pull 50 pounds on this scale. So this at one foot, when I hit 50, that will be 50 foot pounds. So I take my silver sharpie and I mark the action ring. And I'm going to just write on here, well, we don't even have to write number one. We know that this is number one. Now we go to 50 foot-pounds. Remember, we're lubed up nicely, so this is going to go smooth and easy. There is 50 foot-pounds. I was at 50 foot-pounds already just from walking it up here because I was holding up high. So now... I'm going to 
have to do this a little bit differently here. I hate to have to strip that off. But I screwed up. What I'm going to do now is go around to the other side and measure this. What I'm going to do is set it all the way to three feet. Boy, this is just kludgy. Let me see if I can get this up. I might just have to show you the method that I'm using, not the actual. Let's see here. Either that or I rip this off of here quick and move it. Unfortunately, I tend to put things on pretty well, so this is not going to be as quick and easy as I would like it to be. Ripping, tearing. What I'm trying to do is move my lashing here. So, I think I'm close enough that I'm going to be able to move it pretty good. Cludging this video up really badly. But, I started my progression upside down, so that's just the way it's going to have to be. Now I go back on here. I go up to my two foot place. I think I'm just going to tie a loop in this. Now here we are at two. Now we're going to go to 50 pounds again. Move this back. Go to 50 pounds on a dead pull. I'm going to mark this because I'm in a weird place. I'm going to pull Oops. until I hit it. Okay, so there we have a hundred foot-pounds, and we've got an advancement to show from that. And we are in fact lined up dead nuts. Not quite. We are almost lined up on what I had called out as the top. So, Without me going into the where's and the withals and going up out of the camera, this is an accurate way. I'm just going to give this a little bump, bring it to top. We are now at top, and that would probably be putting us at, you know, you can do all this math, you can figure, I would say that my 50 foot pounds would probably be about right here. Let's find out. Oops, I advanced it a little bit. Just a touch. So I'm at 50, 100, and... Ah, oh man, I might be at 110. But that's sufficient for a PPC. And we've got to what I wanted because we've timed this so that we have the vibrations where I want it. And we've showed you what we're doing with it. Um... Get back down here. And I'll try to quickly disassemble this and show you our, our uh, marks. At this point, those of you who bore easily might just want to shut this video off. Because this is going to take a couple of minutes for me to discombobulate everything. And show you if you want to see the actual advance marks, which may or may not tell you anything. I feel kind of clumsy sliding this old metal action wrench around on a $1,700, $1,500 action, but I'm not scarring it up. These are fairly 
well fitted parts. There you can see some of the advances that have happened. This right here, now remember, this is not a recoil lug. That's why it stayed there. This right here is my, it's marked top. This right here is where I advanced to. These are crude, but if I, I presume based on prior doing many, many, many of these at 150 foot pounds, I would advance up to not a full, I would probably advance about that much more. And in this particular case, this being a PPC, I don't want to advance that far. It's not worth it for the fact that that's going to screw up the timing on my barrel. So in fact, I brought it up to where now I've got the alignment I want. I've got the point of the barrel, the, the end of the barrel pointed where I want it. This, by the way, was a shillin, is a shillin. Um, see if I can, that you can read it. But anyway, I just ordered this out of Brownells. This is a cheap Brownells 14 twist number seven select match. This is the very first barrel that I'm putting on this assembly, just to test it out. Um, the things that are weird about it are the fact that it's a, as I said, a number seven shillin that I've just put on here as a uh, kind of a test, not as a test fixer. Shillin are as good a barrels as any. Let's just start with that. Um, it will have in the end Bartlines and Kriegers and Lilges and uh, whatever. Pack Nors, I don't know. But in this case, I had this barrel kicking around. Um, I always have a bunch of shillings around, and the nice thing is that typically from Brownells, you can just order these. Um, so here it is. There we have the turned off portion on the bottom. See if I can get this up where you can see it. Very short focal length. Recoil lug milled here, turned off portion on the bottom. From the top, it's going to just look like another barreled assembly. And there, now I've got some, uh, you can kind of see as I roll through here what I've accomplished or what I've done. The fact that I chose this as the top of the barrel is my own arbitrary set of, of uh, ideas and so far they've been okay so we'll put this thing together got a stock for it right here get this back around to where we started its stock is right down there haven't even got started on it yet just getting ready this is one of the Bruno McMillan LV collaborations um, interesting stock, got an aluminum honeycomb plate in the front of it. Um, don't really know what else to say, I guess. Just wanted to, while I'm screwing that on, show it to you. So I'm going to cut this one short and say, well, we're going to go take this barrel to action that I've got set up now, go start in letting this guy and uh, get her fit into here. Find out, build this one concurrently with the rest of them and test them all together once we get out and start banging on the range. I have a problem because I want to shoot uninterrupted. So I need to get these all together. This guy's coming together. It's basically shootable. This is the left-handed one. I'm trying out a new scope. I believe it's a 35 millimeter Leupold Mark 5 HD. Got their HD glass. Got, I don't know, whatever crap. But for 22 or 2300 bucks, if this scope does as much as it's supposed to, Oddly enough, that should be a fairly reasonable, uh, dare I say, cheap price point. Because the scopes, the, the Dion optics, and, oh, I don't know, let's just not go beyond that. March is considered to be a good high-end scope. And uh, I shoot, doesn't matter what I shoot. We're trying this against some of the other scopes that are basically twice as much money. So, we'll see how that works out. But, I digress. I'll let you go. Thanks for watching, guys.